God is good. And all the time. How are we doing? We're doing good? Praise God. You know the story? It's a story that's, that starts somewhere in a very beautiful island, if you like. Beautiful place. This young, beautiful lady is walking by this island. There are all these botanical flowers, and then you see the hibiscus and the petunia flowers and all the sunflowers, and the whole thing is so colored. It's just a beautiful, a rainbow, a potpourri of different kind of things. Nature at display. Birds are chirping out there, and the animals are making different noises there. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful atmosphere. You are with me in your minds? Yes. And as it happens, as it happens, um, she enjoyed this place because that was a place she always a go-to place for her. Whenever she wanted just to enjoy the days of the sun rays and see what God was doing or the morning dawn of the sun and see the beautiful yellow color or like a banana that rises up out of the east and she was enjoying that moment. In that moment should uh, converse oftentimes with her lover because she was in love, you see. Should converse with her lover and enjoy just that utmost fellowship and uh, telling one another little nothings and enjoying just fellowship and communion together uh, as she enjoyed nature um, until this awful, horrible, disgusting creature appeared in the garden where she was and it said your lover is not telling you the whole truth your lover doesn't love you it's just empty words and I wanted to know that that your lover does not like you and she says what are you talking about we are madly in love with my lover, and I, I know that this can't be true. She said, I am telling you right now, is your lover is withholding you this and this and this, all the joy and the fun and the excitement and the pleasurables you are supposed to be having and enjoying around your life. You are not having it because it doesn't even have time for you. Only comes occasionally from now and now and again, but your lover doesn't love you. I can tell you, convinced day every morning as she was hearing this until she started to believe what this awful creature was saying to her. Of course, you know that beautiful lady, her name was Eve. When Eve was in the Garden of Eden, enjoying fellowship, the Bible calls it Zoe kind of life, which is the God's type of life. A life free from pain, free from sorrow, free from attacks of any kind. She was enjoying that fellowship. She'd wake up early in the morning and she's going around in the garden and she always knew that they were connected with her lover, God Almighty. The Bible says when you read it, it says in Genesis, the voice of God would visit in the garden of Eden. These two, we have what I call a godly talk. A love talk that was not contaminated. Until the awful creature appeared somewhere on the tree. And the creature said, Your lover knows if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like him. Eat the tree. He knows you can become like him if you eat that tree. And she thought about it. She thought about it. Don't think it was a one time thing. She thought about it. And she began, some things begin to build inside her mind. And oftentimes, as we always know, when the enemy wants to attack, 
the credibility of your relationship with somebody. He plants in seeds of doubt. Doubt started to grow inside her. Could this awful creature telling me the truth that maybe if I partake of this fruit, I'll be smarter and I'll be exactly like my God. She took the fruit because doubt was coming in. Feelings of betrayal started to loom in, in her heart because she's thinking, maybe this awful creature is telling me the truth. The moment she ate that fruit, you now know, everything that you and I today suffer from entered her. Whether it was fear, it was loneliness, it was doubt, it was pain, different anxiety, depression, all it came upon her. And we know that the Bible tells us she took of the fruit and she gave some to her husband who was with her. From that day, a devastating effect began to take place. The consequences of them believing the lies that came from that awful creature yeah. left us all shafted. You and I, your default position yeah. when you are born in this world, yeah. no matter how righteous you think you can be, it's already faulty. And because you are born already with doubt and fear, you are with depression, all this now as a mission to you, depression, anxiety, doubt, fear, are not the problem. The problem is Rejection. Rejection has a root in itself. And the root of rejection brings out the fruit. And the fruit of rejection is fear, is anxiety, is depression, it's the pain. The, everything else that you think is surrounding you. Everything else that you are suffering from. Whatever it's an, whether it's an addiction within you. I want you to understand it's just a fruit that stems out of a root. In order for you, therefore, to be set free, you need to deal with the root, not the fruit. Because if you deal with the fruit, you are doing exactly what was introduced in the garden. Because the devil gave them the fruit. And when they took the fruit to solve an identity problem, that was where the problem began. Many Christians... They never deal with the root issues of where they are. So they deal with the symptoms. You are plucking out the fruit. I know you are trying them to come down. I don't like to be like this. I don't like to be angry. But the anger is not the problem. The root problem is rejection. And you say to me, where does rejection come from? Because sometime one day when glories were taking place in the heavenlies, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they had the cherubs and the seraphims, these are angels that were created by God. And we've heard about Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer as the three archangels that is commonly believed by commentators as they talk. And I wanted to understand that it is in that situation where there was one angel amongst the God, uh, the, the, the Godhead that was that was created by God as a cherub and is called an anointed cherub in the sense that when he sang and brought in worship before God, seven types of instruments would play at the same time. Whenever he worshipped, the 24 elders in glory would do down their crowns. Whenever he started to worship, he worshipped in such a way that the whole heaven was filled with the atmosphere of glory because God eats worship. God is music. And therefore, whenever he's worshipped, that's why the Bible says, Psalms 22, he inhabits the praises of his people. Because when God, when you and I begins to give him worship, God, he breathes down blessings on us. Because that's how God works in our lives. He is music. Yes. So when the 
Lucifer by his name then, which was called the anointed cherub, when he started to worship and saw what was happening, that the heavens were shaking whenever he worshipped, he then moved his attention from worshipping God, the only creator that had made him, and he started to worship his gift. When Lucifer worshipped worship, yes, come on. is it possible that you can actually be led astray and end up worshipping your own gift? Let me leave you there. But it's important that when he started to worship himself, yeah, come on. he said, I am better than everybody else. I'm better than Michael. I'm better than Gabriel. I'm better than any other. Whenever I worship, things move in the heavens started looking at himself and he started now pride rose up in him according to Isaiah 28 and when he rose up from him his name being Lucifer which was the bright star or the morning star yeah. and the Bible tells us that when he fell from heaven out of insubordination when the heavens dealt with him and he fell down his name changed from Lucifer to Diabolos because whenever you move away from where God has planted you, when God is not in your gifting, you are on your own. So when Lucifer left glory, as the name tags are following him, he's no longer the morning star. He's no longer the bright one. He's no longer the one that walked upon the stones of fire. So the more he was falling down in the second heavenlies, because there are three heavens, the third heaven where God is, the second heaven where the spiritual fight is, and the heavens that we see, you and I, which we call the atmospheric heaven. Yeah. So I wanted to understand that when he put his headquarters there in the heavenlies, he then rules from there. It is from there where he sends his rulers. He sends his principalities. It is from there where he sends his chief demons. It is from there, from the headquarters of the second heavenlies. But that's where you and I are, seated with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Yeah. When he was corrupted, because of coming against the Godhead, find his place in the garden and found one of God's beloved. And he lied to them because rejection brings in rejection. For the first one to be rejected was him. The first person. So the root of all problems in humanity, trust me, it goes beyond the abuse that was done to you. It goes beyond the pain and the suffering that you ever think about. It goes beyond you not wanting to forgive those that hurt you. It is in rejection. Because the devil was rejected from glory. So his motive was one in the Garden of Eden. If I can convince you to doubt that God loves you, that means you have got a misplaced identity. If you have got a misplaced identity, every day of your life when you live, you are a dangerous person if you don't know who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, everything goes. If you don't know who you are, Culture is ready to give you. If you don't know who you are, your friends are ready to give you. Yeah. Right? So every morning you change this type of makeup, the other type of makeup, you change these shoes, put Nike, put on Gucci, and, and then your identity becomes based on the externals. Yeah, yes. I often say, it's not Nike that makes you a person of fashion. You make that brand to be a person of fashion because it's not in that name, it's in who I am. My identity, it is not in the clothes, it's not in the brand, it's not in the perfume that I put on or the deodorant I put on, it is in what God made of me. I love myself, therefore, when I wake up in the morning, I love myself when I go to bed. I love myself when I sleep and I'm snoring. I love myself. Because who I am 
Is that what matters as I live in this world? Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, stay with me because I want to take you uh, somewhere. I want to take you somewhere. I've said all that just to paint a picture for you to say. If rejection is the main problem that you and I need to deal with, all what we're saying is go to the root of the problem. If you deal with the root of the problem, you'll find out in the garden, just as there were two trees in the garden, the tree of good and evil and the tree of life. When you are born again into the kingdom of God, there is the tree of life and I call that the root of rejection must be replaced by the root of acceptance. And only Christ will redefine what the enemy tried to cheat you and told you you were not. You are with me. I want to take you, take you a little bit further because I want to talk really about where, where, we, where we started uh, last week there about your relationship therefore with the Holy Spirit. Why it matters. Because in the garden before the fall of Adam and Eve, what you hear the Bible says the voice of God used to come in the garden of Eden in the cool of the day and speak with them. That was the voice of the spirit of God. Somebody shout spirit of God. He was called the spirit of God before the fall. He is called now the Holy Spirit because he that who was holy could no longer inhabit that which was unholy. So you and I, when we understand the work of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in Adam's life was like a regulator, was like a controller. He, that's why he gave names to all the animals. He was given dominion over everything. Because when the Holy Spirit is in your life, he regulates your life. You begin to live your life according to the dictates that are dictated from the Spirit of God. Oh Lord Jesus, help me. So it's important that you understand that in my walk with the Holy Spirit. So if you were to ask me, the greatest evil, if it is rejection, it is rooted in rejection. How do we get that back? My answer to you would be the most ignored person of the third head, which is the Holy Spirit. If you have him in your life, will solve all your problems. And I say to us here that it goes beyond speaking in other tongues. Because you can speak in other tongues and still have a stinking attitude. Speaking in other tongues is just what comes out as a result, as an evidence, the Bible says. Hmm. And it's important that you understand, therefore, that as you continue to journey with God, please don't miss that the greatest thing that I believe you can do for yourself, while it's right here on earth, is for you to continuously be aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit over your life. Amen. That helped me in my walk with God to know that I had to create a discipline every time when worry sets in my life to begin to engage with Him first. Because if you engage with Him first, He will reveal Himself to you. Somebody thought amen. amen. Because salvation brought you into a relationship with the Holy Spirit. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, God removed them from the garden. And God put the cherub there that was in the garden to protect it. But when Jesus came, we now know that he said, I need to go. Because if I don't go, he will not come. So, but if I go, I will send you another comforter. Yeah. So the work of the Holy Spirit over your life, the Greek word paracletus, somebody who comes alongside me. Yes. And the only example I can give you is the example of a husband and a wife. You can be in relationship, but out of fellowship. Yeah. We have some of those very, very sour talks with my wife from time to time. As we go, and she says, I feel there is a distance between us. And if you're a wise man, you know. She's not talking about this closeness. She's talking about something deeper. Yeah. That it is possible we sleep together. 
but no fellowship. It is possible to be together. You are in relationship, but intimacy is not there. So allow me to say, intimacy comes as a result of surrender. Because when the Holy Spirit builds up in our lives, he builds up capacity in our lives, but it is not just for Kurama Shanda, Kurama Shanda, Shandai, 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 tie my bow tie, untie my bow tie, and then tie my bow tie again, and untie my bow tie. That's not just that. The purpose of the Holy Spirit in my life, he wants fellowship, intimacy, working with him. He needs to know what's happening in my world. And he needs to report to me what's happening in his world so that we can continue to converse and work together. Amen. You're with me. Yes. So let me give you a scripture, a scripture that has got really four items around it. And I want to make sure that we get that together so that as we work together, where's my stuff? I'm going to start right now. Just, you can pause as you continue to look at me like that. But I'm going to say, well, this is a pillow. I know somebody's saying right now, I've never seen such a bed, but I'm going to tell you right now. I want to, in the meantime, you know, I wanted to go to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 for me. And let's start it from verse 4. And let's see what happens here. Second Kings chapter 4. Hope I got that right. Check for me verse 10. I'm making a bed. Verse 10. Now, I know, I know exactly some of you might be thinking something right now, and you're thinking, oh, that looks like my, the blanket of my baby that I left. If you left it home in my house, I'm using it today. I don't know. You know, look in case he always leaves something there, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you. Let's cover you nicely. Let's cover you nicely. Let's cover you nicely. Shall you deal with me afterwards? After? You're wondering, why did you take my Juna? That's all right, honey. Very relax, boo boo. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Now I want you to go back to the verse. Let's see. So that they can understand the context. You know, go back to verse 4. And let's go there. I'm going to read verse 4 and then you're going to read with me from verse 10. Let's go verse 4. When you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the four ones. It's a story about a woman that you know, husband died, left to the two sons. Creditors are coming. They want to take care, take care two sons. And therefore, the prophet does a miracle for her and tells her, what do you have in your house? And the woman said, I've got only a jar of oil. And from that jar of oil, we begin to see the awesomeness of what God is able to do. Because that teaches us a very powerful principle that as we walk with God, oftentimes it is not the largeness of the vessel that you have, but it is the little, the content that is in that container that you have. If the content is right, it will fix the vessels. Listen to what the Bible says as we go. Set aside the full ones. Let's keep going. Verse 5. You know, let's see what it says. Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door behind her. And her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Let's keep going. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that... She said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil stopped. Let's keep going. Then she came and told the men of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. Keep going. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem. Where there was a notable woman. Persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. Let's keep going. She said to her husband, look now. I know that this is a holy man of God. 
who passes by us regularly. Now I'm going to ask us to read all of us, verse 10, which is where my context is. Let's read verse 10 together. Mm. So your concentration is in understanding what the Bible says there. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall. A what? Talk with me. Come on, Destiny. A what? Shout it again. A small upper room. And he says, let us put a bed for him there. You saw my bed. And he says, let us put a bed for him there. Why is she asking let us put a bed for him there. Because everything in the kingdom about your life is tailored to achieve something towards your destiny. How can I say this? Even sleeping to a child of God. The reason why the enemy gets involved in your dreams and he gets involved in your sleep it is because he knows everything tailored around you is dangerous to him. Do I make sense? Yeah. When you understand that as a child of God, you will understand, they call this uh, siesta. It's, it's an afternoon nap. You call it a nana nap. I call it a power nap. Because in here, when this woman of God says, when the man of God comes here every time, we want him to rest. So the bed was for two reasons. It is for rest and it is for intimacy. It is for? Rest. It is for? Intimacy. Because intimacy births something. Out of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, what you find in Luke chapter 1 from verse 35, that the Bible says God visited through the Holy Spirit a young woman by the name of Mary, whose name really meant Mara, which means bitterness. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost came upon her and the angel of God said, you shall be pregnant. And she said, how shall this be? Because I know not a man. And the Bible says, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. I do want you to see and understand the importance of you and I when you see these items that I've just put here. They're really just ordinary items, but I want you to understand the importance, what they signify for you in the spirit. When you don't spend time with the one that God said he should come and become your helper, your attorney, your advocate, and he will become the one that will walk alongside you. If you are ignoring that moment with him, you are missing everything around your journey with him. I pray today that in destiny, you and I can be able to say once again in our lives, Holy Spirit, you are all that I need. Yes. Amen. People in your life who walk in and walk out of your life. Uh, friends in your life, family in your life. Some of you have been forsaken. And different kind of things and issues have taken place in your family. But I want you to understand that uh, being intimate with the Holy Spirit gives you a leverage. An understanding of growing in your journey as you walk with him. The Bible says, he said, that, let's make a bed for him. So that when he comes in every time, he will have this relationship. But from this relationship that he has with him, he will have a time of rest and surrender before his God. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. You know, I wanted to go there for me. 2 Corinthians 13 14. And let's see what it says. 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Let's read all of us together. One to go. The grace, the love, here's the said reality when you check that. You see that that's the trinity there? That's the tree, all of them being involved. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ by which you and I were saved. 
We came to salvation because it was the grace that set us free and that saved us. So Jesus Christ brought and introduced the grace. And by grace we are saved. Not of our own works, not out of our own righteousness, but it is the grace of God. Amen. Amen. So Jesus Christ comes in. It's part of the Godhead. Remember there are not three gods, it's one God who manifests himself. In three ways. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and then says the love of God. And the love of God was shown in that, you see, I've got only one son. No matter how much I love you. No matter how much I care for you. You can give me a million dollars. But I will not give up my son for you. But see, the love of God teaches us he had only one. His only begotten son. He gave him for us. The love of God. But you know what's so said? And then it says, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you and I are going to see the book of Acts being relieved, it's time we understand and repent before God that, Lord, the very person that we've been ignoring in our lives is the most important person here on earth, and that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. What's said about that verse is that, when Jesus brought grace, people rejected him. What's said about it? When God's love was shown on the mountain, on Mount Sinai with Moses, that's when they started worshipping another idol. They made their idol down the foot of the mountain. I find it very interesting. Whenever God had visited his very own, we pushed him away. God the Father when he come on the mountain wanting to speak to his people, they say, Moses, you better speak to us. We don't want your God to speak to us. There is always a tendency in humanity to push away what God wants to build in their lives. You are with me? Communion of the Holy Spirit. It is something that you and I, I believe God wants us to value as we walk with him. And that can only be developed, number one, by understanding the value of being. Because when you are here, you have intimate moments with him. How can I say it so that you can understand it? You see, it's easy to command when we're in a church set up. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. But can I suggest something to you? You have no authority to command it here until you spend intimate time with him here. Make sense? That there are many Christians who think just because I must use the name of Jesus Christ that they can go out there and begin to command and begin to cut and begin to bind. It doesn't work like that. If it is not developed here with him, you cannot command authority there. Authority comes from an encounter with him. And encounters are established through intimate moments. Moments where I'll be able to say, Lord, when I'm here, I don't have to shout. I can just say, Lord, I love you. Lord, you are wonderful to me. I spend that time because that time with him, when I'm here lying down, I'm allowing him to scan everything around my life so that when I leave my bedroom, I'll be able to go out there and command. Because the reason why it was called, let's build him a bed here in this small upper room because close encounters happen behind closed doors. Pregnancy is not formed in the public. I don't know in other countries. <laughs> But you know that it is something that is intimate that takes place behind closed doors. I pray that you today, you establish this within your heart. That in my life, in my journey with God, I want to go back to those moments. Where I have the sweetest nothings with him. Communion. Yes. It's called communion of the Holy Spirit. Goes beyond what we give you every Sunday morning. Communion with the Holy Spirit, that means I'm engaging with him. He knows me, I know him. I want to move today in my journey with God. Somebody might say here today, I want to move just from having a relationship with him. Because relationship with Christ is very legal. It's legalistic. But intimate relationship with him comes out with discipline and commitment. I tell myself, I must spend time with him. You're with me? Yes. Go back to the verse in 2 Kings where we are. So the bed was there, set up for 
times of intimacy with him and so that I can grow with him. Let's read once again. Please let us make a small upper room. Want to go? Please let us make a small upper room mm-hmm. on the wall. Mm-hmm. A table. A table. A table. A table. You're in a bed. This is going to be our table. No one did you see? He says, a table and a what? Chair. Let's get a chair then. Want to bring me a chair? Thank you, my darling. Beautiful. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we have a bed. We have a table. We have a chair. Okay. What's missing? We need a lampstand, don't we? Let's get them the lampstand then. Where is the lampstand? There you are, lampstand. Deal with it. I just picked it up somewhere. Do you trust me, Prince, with this? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You're a funny church, I tell you what. Listen. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall, right? Every child of God, you should have somewhere in your house, no matter how small your room, your house is, should always have a time, a place where you meet you and God, Amen. right? That's simply what it means. And then he says there, let us put a bed for him there, and we know it's for rest and it's for intimacy. Intimacy develops. It gives me authority so that when I rise up, Early in the morning, I rise up already empowered by the intimacy that was built in here. Yes. So it is not God's will for you to wake up and oh, it goes another day. I feel so depressed and I'm so lonely. Oh, I know. oh here we go. This weather sucks. You start your day already telling yourself that you are a preacher to yourself. Yes. You get me? You are a preacher to yourself. And because you are a preacher to yourself, what you tell yourself when you wake up in the morning is vital. Absolutely. Come on. From the encounter that I've developed with the Holy Spirit, it empowers me to go out there to the world. But then he says there, once we have put a bed there and a table and a chair, and a lampstand. I want to talk about the lampstand first before I go to the chair and the table. Because the lampstand connects itself to the power source. There is a connection that connects this lampstand to where the power is. It's not on, but the power is there. It's not on, there's no light, but the power is there. If you're not careful in your journey with God, You don't establish encounters here with him. You become religious. And then you only know the power of the Holy Spirit when everybody is here shouting. But you know very well by the time you get out there and you are alone. I'm depressed. Because what happens is you can't build it here. It's not supposed to be built out of celebratory moments. It's supposed to be built on a personal value there with him. Because the Holy Spirit is not after your gifts. He's after you. Yes. Talk to me. Yes. So he says, a lampstand therefore is a picture of your relationship that walk with the Holy Spirit. And um, I know you will laugh at this because I just realized I did not get the globe. But, but, (laughs) 
but <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. <coughs> Let's see. Tell one I want, wanted to show you. I wanted to remove this cover because it's very important to this lamp. If I remove this cover, just picture it's removed, okay? Let's remove it. It's removed, okay? Yeah. The naked light connected to this point without connecting to the power source yes. still doesn't work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You wonder why when you go through your life dry and drained and you feel like nothing's happening, you're not enjoying that relationship with him. The truth is, you do need to already to connect because here's what Jesus says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. When we talk in this series about the diversity of tongues, which I believe that many of us have been confused. Teachings that come from fundamental churches who teach you that I cannot speak in tongues until it's interpreted. But I'll tell you the differences as we go. But here's what I want to catch for today. That the Holy Spirit is the main key that you need in your life. If you connect with him on that level, always remember, power is there. It must be supplied. And because it's already there, you need to turn on the switch. And you turn on the switch, let's make, it, make, make, make this to make sense. Encounters that I develop here with him. Intimate moments I develop here with him. My journey that is personal I develop with him. Brings me to here so that my lamp or my light will shine before people to see. But they cannot see it until I develop from the bedroom. Because from the bedroom are moments of intimacy. From the bedroom, I can tell him all my secrets. From the bedroom, I can begin to tell him all, pillow talk with him. Are you with me? Now when you are here, then when your light is supposed to shine, it's connected with through the extension cord. The extension cord is just the grace of God. It connects you to the power source. The main power source there, what we need on the world, is God the Father himself. And I want you to understand that God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Until you switch on the power source there, you can live your life defeatedly. Yet you are supposed to walk in power. Somebody shout amen. amen. Did, did it make sense? Yes. Now I'm going to take this cover and I'm going to put it back. And I'll tell you why it's important. Because many of us as Christians, we think we can operate on our own. So you've got a lot of globes that are just naked globes that are standing out there. And they say, all I need is God. Now I'm going to tell you, it's not just God you need in this world. In this journey of faith, Never allow yourself to think, all I need is God. I don't care about whoever says about what. This cover represents your mentors. This cover represents your pastors, represents those that speak into your life. Everybody here should have persons around you, whether it's one or two or three. But there should never be more than five. I, 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 my mentor taught me this and he said to me, I'm now over 80. But there, I can only pick up for you three people that I go to who speak to my life. Sometimes it's only one person. And that one person who is like a mentor over your life covers you. Covers you. So that when you shine, your light can shine properly. Many of us who run out like loose cannons and they don't obey authority. They don't know who they are accountable to. Yeah. There are many of Christians who are like that in our time. You wonder who... Who ordained you to be a prophet? Yes. You were a brother yesterday. You are a prophet today. Who is above you? Yes. Who has made you an apostle? Who has made you? Because we are. Come on. We are after gifts. We don't realize that in the kingdom, anointing does not come from titles. But it comes from towels. Come on, tweet that. Come on. Come on, I try. Come on. Because towel is a place of service. Towel is the thing that Jesus was holding before he went to die on the cross. He met with his disciples. He washed their feet. He dried them with a the towel. Anointing in the kingdom of God, it's not made by titles we have. 
but through the towers of seven. Yes, the lamp is on the table. Because on the table, if I say to you, let's come and have table talk. Because on the table, you are laying down your aspirations. You are giving me your problems. You are giving me your issues. But that does not happen until I develop an encounter from here. And then I can come here and I say, Lord, as my light shines, let the Holy Spirit reveal areas in my life. I may not even know that they are there. Because everybody here has got their own blind spots. Then a chair. What is a chair for? Chair says, don't rush. I had a very good conversation with somebody and, and, and they were saying to me, how do you feel when God does not heal? You know, you read the miracles of what Jesus Christ did and uh, you are now introduced about a God who heals and God who sets free and God who delivers. How do you feel genuinely when God does not heal? Uh, the people that you have prayed for after you promised them that there is healing in Jesus' name. Then I say, the truth, I don't put my faith in healing. I put my faith in the healer. Because if I put my faith in healing, I will be disappointed. Because I prayed for healing for many of my loved ones and friends. I wanted to see them healed. And they died. I went to the hospital by faith and marching there, Kuraba Shanda, Kuraba Shanda. And I prayed, Ta 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 ta. Come on, lift up your hand, lift up your hand. Yeah! After a day, they died. And I felt bad because I thought maybe I killed them because I made them make <laughs> gymnastics too much. So my faith is not in healing, but my faith is in the healer. Amen. And I want to encourage you that never allow your gifts to take center stage. Between you and him. Amen. Because the end of this goal does not end in healing. It ends in us being with the healer. Amen. Get it? Amen. That's why it says three things will remain. He says faith, hope, and love. What does that mean? Hope says to me, I may not have it. I may not get it tomorrow. I may not, it may not come even next month. But it's okay. My faith in God still believes my God is able. Amen. If I don't get it now, what I'm supposed to be having, the life I have desired in my life, I know what remains is faith, hope, and love. And he says, the greatest of these is love. My love for him is more important than what he does for me. My love for him is more important than the gifts he gives me. My love for him is more important than all the cars that I drive, the house that I live in. I get that. But at the end of it all, I love him more importantly than everything else that I see. Somebody shout amen. amen. The chair helps you to look and serve people from where you are. When I'm sitting at a chair, I am saying, Lord, help me not to rush and grow too quickly. Because sitting down says, relax. Mm -hmm. Sitting down says, look around you. Have a downtime. Grow in the gifts. I say to you, this many times in our world, we have got a world that is full of people that have got a lot of quick fixes. They want everything now and they want it today. But in your walk with God, the desire is you walk with him step by step. You see the capacities building in your life so that you never rush what God has not done completed in your life. I call that a half-baked Christianity. Because half-baked Christianity does not wait for that cake to be properly put. Sit down. And it's in sitting down, you learn how to serve. One of the things that I'm appreciating is I see many of you are serving. By the way, I understand that Leah Noble, she has prepared a big pot of soup. And I say, that's the kind of my guy right there. <laughs> so after church, there is a soup at the back there. I love when God brings us all of us together. And there is an element of what can I do in the church? 
what can I do? And, and, and another good thing, another good thing, talking about saving. I, I love the fact that uh, I was talking to Bettina. Uh, Bettina is very, very, she, she's a shrewd business woman, that one. And, and, and when, when, I, when I want to check what's happening in the accounts of the finances of the church, and I went there and I saw, and I said, oh. and I realized that many of you are becoming more faithful in giving towards where we are going from here. Because I'm so tired of this lesser hole. I'm just after my own building. And I believe that's what God is doing. So I wanted to encourage you that keep on serving. Let your money serve God. Let your tithes serve God. Let everything you do serve God. We are here in this church. We believe everyone is gifted. In this church, we believe everyone is gifted. Serve by starting where you are. When you are here, before pulpit or podium, a chair, because everybody here has got a chair. Yeah. So, before is the podium, chair. Find a chair, grow in your gifting, allow God to build capacity in you, allow God to do that which he has always designed to do. And as we continue to do this together, I pray that God will raise men and women that will change the face of this community, and together, we can make it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give God a big hand of praise together with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you learn something this morning? Yes. Develop your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Start there. Develop with him. It doesn't matter whether you've been baptized yet with the Holy Spirit or not. Just develop there. Walk with him. Get used to have that intimacy with him and see what he wants to build even over your life in Jesus' mighty name. And as you continue to walk with him, you'll see how your light shines in front of everybody. You'll be able to be a person of influence and you'll see how you can connect with the world around you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you today. And as you pray, I just wanted to spend time alone with the Holy Spirit and think where you are, what has been going on in your life, what has been going on in your world. When we make room for him, the Holy Spirit will build capacity in us. When we make room for him, when we know him in an intimate way, his will will be done. There are people here that are struggling. You're struggling in your life. You're struggling finding the light that shines into your world. But before we go home, ask the Holy Spirit. I want you to be real to me. Be involved in my affairs, be involved in my family, be involved in my personal life, be involved in my finances, be involved in every area of my life. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, what welcome is only potent Father of mercy and grace that will. Again to him, Holy Spirit, thou what welcome. Sing it to him in this place, Holy Spirit.
invite you to stand on your feet with me right now all over this Holy building. Holy Spirit, the now what what well. welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art say this prayer together with me right now before God just stretch forth your hands as a way of surrender before him and say this with me dear Holy Spirit I bring my life before you I belong to you I belong to you and I thank you and I thank you for speaking to my life for speaking to my life you are my helper you are my helper walk with me tell him walk with me direct walk my footsteps me. direct my footsteps every day of my life every day of my life create moments with you create moments with you where i grow intimacy where i grow intimacy communion with you communion with you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus so that my lamp may shine so that my lamp may shine that your name will be glorified so that your name will be glorified in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name thank you Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit for our table talk for our table talk about my issues about my issues about my problems about my problems I bring them before you I bring them before you and thank you you are my healer you're my healer you are my Lord you're my Lord and you are my master in my Jesus master. name in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Tell him once again, Holy Spirit. Come on, open up your mouth to him. Open up your mouth to him. Open up your mouth to him. Oh, we love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We glorify your name. Oh Lord, Jesus, 
As I dismiss you, I want to dismiss you to go in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. But I sense to those that are here today, the Lord is showing me almost about five people that are here. And the Lord has been saying this word since I began preaching. Stagnation. Stagnation. It's almost like the enemy has stopped everything around your life. And the Lord just kept on pounding that word. Cut the spirit of stagnation whatever is stagnant in your life today the Lord wants to break that from your life a sense that God wants to do that many of you that are here right now that are saying I want to develop this relationship with the Holy Spirit I want to go on this love walk with the Holy Spirit the person that I've always ignored in my life the presence of the Holy Spirit I want to journey with him I want him to know me. I want him to know the idiosyncrasies of my life and the secret corners of my life. I want, to, I want to expose them to him. I want him to build capacity in me so that I can be all that he wants me to be.